I'm going to show you how I turned this into this using the cut kit fastening setup for under $500, including the rough gem. It may not be a catch-all tutorial, but I want to show you how I was able to cut this stone on this setup. Let's start with a quick look at the faceting machine. To facet a stone, you have to control three things. The vertical angle, the rotational angle, and the height of the stone above the grinding disc. On this machine, the vertical angle is set by this hard stop on the protractor, which is held in place with a thumb screw. To make large adjustments, you loosen the thumb screw, move the hard stop, and retighten it. For finer adjustments, you loosen this thumb nut, turn this bolt, and then retighten the thumb nut. The rotational angle is controlled by the position of the index gear. It can be changed by pushing up on the quilt to disengage the gear, twisting it, and then lowering it back into position. For finer adjustments, you can loosen this nut and turn this knob, which is known as the cheater, to move the entire gear. The cheater is very sensitive, so only ever turn it a little bit at a time. The height is controlled by the position of this split nut. For the coarse height adjustment, you loosen the knob, move the entire nut, and retighten. For fine adjustment, you can loosen or tighten this top segment to slightly lower or raise the handpiece. With these three, you have full control over the position of the stone, and you can facet it however you want. Now let's get to it. I'm going to cut this laser garnet with the Flash 8 design that's included in every cut kit. It's a simplified Asher cut, and even though it's easy to facet, it looks like a million bucks when it's cut. I cut down in my crawl space where a bit of splashing water doesn't matter. First up, I put my 6mm flat dop into the dop holder, light the alcohol lamp, and begin warming up the dop. It doesn't take long, the flame is pretty hot. Next, I stick the wax into the flame. Be careful with this wax, I have a scar from a hot drop of it. Once the wax has started to melt, you can start putting it on the dop. You know the dop's hot enough if the wax sticks right away. You only need a little bit like this stuck on the end. Next, I take my rough laser garnet in my tongs and hold it in the flame. You don't want to get it too hot, just warm on the broad face that you're going to stick to the dop. Now, take the dop, rewarm that ball of wax on the end, and stick them together. See how the wax immediately sticks to the stone surface. If the stone is too cold, the wax will solidify instead and it won't get a good bond. Once the wax has cooled a bit, I examine the stone to make sure it's centered. If it was off center, I could easily nudge it back into position while the wax was still warm. Once the wax is set, I loosen the collet and put the dop in, tightening it part way but not all the way so it can still rotate. I take the 270 grit cutting lap and put it on the machine, tightening it with a thick washer and nut. Note the nut is left handed so I have to loosen it to tighten it. I also install the cut kit splash guard and slide it to one side. Now I loosen the mask, slide it to the edge of the machine and tighten it down. I remove the split nut, let the handpiece sit directly on the thumb nut, and set the vertical angle to 90 degrees. I also set the index gear to 96. Now I can lay the flat edge of the rough stone flat against the lap and tighten the collet. This way the square shape of the rough lines up with the square shape of the stone that I want to cut from it. With the split nut back in place and the handpiece raised up, I set the angle to 45 degrees. Next I turned on the pump and opened the valve to get a steady drip of water, and lowered the stone so I could start cutting. At this point I'm just roughing the shape in so I keep lowering the handpiece until the facet has almost reached the middle of the stone. Then I go from 96 to the opposite angle at 48 degrees allowing the facet to keep grinding until it reaches the hard stop at the same depth as the first facet. You can see the two facets don't quite meet at a sharp edge, so I cut this facet a bit deeper and then switch back to 96. This time I made it a sharp edge right at the center of the stone. Next, I grind in two more facets, 24 and 72, until they meet at a nice point in the center. This is all we're going to do with the 280 grit lap. From here we swap to the 600 grit lap. Don't worry, a little water will just help it seep better. Before we cut with it, a brand new 600 grit lap can sometimes be a bit too aggressive, so to tame it I use this section of Lab Ruby which is included in the kit. Hold it tight and rub it against the lap while it's running. Once the surface of the ruby has been smoothed down, the lap should be ready to use. The first thing we do is recut those four facets with the 600 grit. You'll see the surface is now dramatically smoother. Once the 45s are back where they should be, I change the angle to 42 and start cutting the next tier. I turn the speed down a bit here since only a little bit of material is being removed and it's easy to overcut. There isn't a hard and fast rule on how far down to cut this facet. You can do it halfway down, a little above, or a little below. They'll all give a slightly different look. For the second facet, I go from 24 to 48 rather than all the way around to 72. I watch carefully as I cut, grinding a bit and then raising the handpiece to look at the stone so I can cut this facet to the same depth as the first one and make them match up. Once they do, I move on to the next facet and finally the fourth one, getting them all cut to the same depth. Now it's time to cut the secondary corner facets. We'll start with the 39 degree facets that meet at the middle of the stone, and I set the lap even slower since these tiny facets cut very fast, gently cutting them in until they meet at the center point of the stone. Then the 42 degree outer facets follow in the same way, grounding so their edges connect the first four facets. Now it's time to facet the girdle or outline of the stone. I set it up just like at the start when I was aligning the stone to the lap with the vertical angle at 90 degrees, and I begin grinding with the index at 96. Grinding the facet down just enough to remove the sawn edge and have a continuous smooth facet. Then I repeat at 24, 48, and 72 degrees. And now I raise the stone up a bit and grind in the corners. Ideally you want this to form a perfect continuous 
continuous level line where the facets and girdle meet, but for your first stone it'll probably look more like this. As you get more skilled you'll find the facets come in more evenly, but for this time don't worry about it. It won't show up when you're looking at the stone in your hand. Now it's time to move on to pre-polish, starting with the girdle. I rarely bother to do a final polish on the girdle, a pre-polish is enough to give it a great look in the hand. For this step we'll use one of the copper laps. I keep the copper laps in plastic bags to protect them from contamination. I charge it with this 8000 grit gear loose diastec. The cut kit is designed for economy, but this is one exception. Gear loose makes the very best polishing compounds for faceters. For pre-polish we don't have to be too careful. Just smear some of the tube onto the lap while it's spinning, give it one spritz of WD-40 as a dispersant, and it's ready to go. And you'll want to have a paper towel wetted with alcohol to wipe off facets for inspection. When you start pre-polishing a facet, you might notice it comes in more on one side than the other. That's because the laps have slightly different surface geometry. If it comes in on the left side of the facet, try applying pressure to the right side, gently twisting the handpiece. That'll usually get it to cut in evenly. Now we're back onto the pavilion facets, starting with the center of the stone. Pre-polish comes in quickly, but make sure you get all the way through the 600 grit scratches. It's hard to see on camera, but there's a bit of roughness to this facet, and it needs just a little longer. Now I set it to 39 and do the corner facets, again setting it just a bit slower so I don't overcut them. You'll probably find the lap is slowing down and giving a worse finish after a few facets. New copper laps especially take a lot of diamond to charge, so don't hesitate to give it a little more every now and then. The rest of the facets are pre-polished and it's time for polish. But before putting the polishing lap on, I wipe down the machine to make sure none of the 8000 grit gets into the polishing lap. Polishing is the fiddliest part of faceting, and the machine needs to be run as slow as it can be, around 1 to 1.5 on the control knob. I use the second copper lap for this, charging it with just one streak from the 60,000 grit stick while spinning, followed by a spritz of WD-40. I then wipe most of it right back off with a fresh paper towel. The ruby we used earlier to break in the 600 grit does double duty. By running it across the lap, we help to push the diamond in and burnish the copper. This is what a pre-polished facet looks like. You can see through it, but the parallel scratches catch the light. After running this facet on the polishing lap for a few seconds, you can see part of it is polished, the bottom left edge. Just like with the pre-polish, since it's coming in on the left, I apply pressure to the right. And since it's coming in at the bottom, I need to raise the handpiece up a little bit. If we're coming in at the top, I'd need to lower it a little bit. And now you can see the facet is evenly polished. Now it's rinse and repeat with the other four facets. Now sometimes when you're polishing, these scratches suddenly appear. Don't worry, they're usually not as bad as they look. For these, I just set the speed up to 2 and try to polish them out. Usually they go away after a bit and I finish the facet back at speed 1. If they don't go away, you might have to go back to pre-polish, but that's not a big deal. This next set of facets is a little bigger, so I'm going to mark them with a black sharpie. This gets immediately rubbed off where it contacts the lap so I can adjust the angle more precisely. I see it's contacting at the top of the facet, so I lower the handpiece down a bit and now it's wiped all the sharpie off and it ends up polishing evenly. Sometimes the rest of the facets and the tear will be fine at this point, but it's a good idea to use the sharpie anyway. It gives a good idea of how things are arranged. And if you run into a facet that won't polish evenly, even with added pressure in the other direction, you can loosen this knob and very gently adjust the cheater to hit the other side of the facet. Be very careful though because it's easy to overshoot. And just like with pre-polish, if you find the speed or quality of your polish is going down, wipe the lap with alcohol and recharge it. Now that all the facets are polished, it's time to remove the dot from the collet and put it in the transfer jig. These jigs have a little wiggle to them in the hand, but as long as they're sitting on a flat surface, they'll stay in position. I light the lamp again, grab another 6mm dot, this one with a cone cut into the end, and apply some hot wax to it. The new dot goes into the other end of the transfer jig, and the original wax joint is wrapped in a wet paper towel. I reheat the cone dot and its wax in the flame, and also heat the pointed pavilion of the stone, then press them together and set the entire jig down on the machine surface while the wax is still hot. Once it's cooled, I gently remove the dops from the jig and make sure that the new dop is actually stuck on. You want to make sure it doesn't fall off the dop. If it does, you can sometimes super glue it back into position, or failing that, you can re-dop with wax and eyeball it, but it's a huge pain. Now I wrap the wet paper towel around the new joint and use the flame to remove the original joint. Now that the transfer is complete, I can cut the crown of the stone. First, I tighten down the master lap without a lap on top of it, and just like at the start, I use it to align the flat girdle of the stone to the lap with the index at 96 degrees so it will be correctly oriented. Now I set the vertical angle to 45 degrees and start grinding. It's important to check that the top of the girdle is parallel to the bottom. If it's slanted, the rotational position is a bit wrong and you'll want to rematch it to the master lap. I cut the next facet to the same depth, using the point at the top of the facet between them as reference, then the other two. I then cut in the corner facets also at 45 degrees. Again, ideally this girdle line would be perfectly flat, but for a starter stone it really just needs to be close. Now I facet the last tier at 35 degrees, and it goes just like the previous tier. And now the top of the stone is fully faceted, and I can move on to pre-polish. It goes just like the pavilion except a little faster because the facets are smaller. And now I wipe everything down again because it's time for the polish. Apply fresh charge and get down to business. Maybe 20 minutes of work later and now the crown is polished. And only one step remains. The table. I take the dot back out of the collet and tighten down the master lap and now it's time to break out the table adapting dot. The adapter holds the dot at around a 60 degree angle so you can cut the flat
flat table. It goes into the collet in place of the normal dop, but I don't tighten it in yet. I set the vertical angle to 60 degrees and lower the adapter until it's close to the master lap, and then rotate it until the flat dop sits flush with the surface. Then I tighten the collet. And make sure it's tight or you're gonna have a bad time. Once I have it flat, I slowly raise the vertical angle setting with the bolt until the flat dop just barely raises off the lap. Then I lower it back down until it's perfectly flush. In this case, the ideal vertical angle was 61 degrees. Now I raise the handpiece up, remove the flat dop, and put in the dop with the gem. The table is ground in with a 600 grit lap, and I like to hold right on the stone to avoid any rotation. Once it's ground in, it's time for the pre-polish, which can take a little while to cover the entire table. And finally, the polish. Before I get going, I use the Sharpie to get the alignment on the lap just right, rubbing the table against the lap and raising or lowering the handpiece until the Sharpie gets rubbed evenly. And now a fresh charge and a long, slow wait until the facet is completely polished. And as with other facets, if it comes in more on one side, you can gently push in the other direction, but be very careful and very gentle. And now the stone's complete. I put the dop in the alcohol flame and use a wet paper towel to catch the hot stone. Once it's cooled, alcohol quickly breaks down and removes the remaining wax, and we can finally see what we've got. I like this one. Even with the simple pattern, the light bounces all around inside it and fills it with fire. It's not perfect, but I don't cut perfect stones on my Ultratech either. And if you'd like to try faceting yourself, this is probably the cheapest way to get into it for under $500 all in. You can go to facet.ing for more information. I had a lot of fun making this gem, and I hope you'll have fun making some of your own. Happy cutting!